Hey everybody. Today we're talking about the addition rule for probabilities. This helps us compute probabilities of unions of events. I want to start with a slightly simplified version. Suppose we have two events, A and B, that are disjoint. That is, they have no outcomes in common. Then the probability of either one of them happening is just the sum of the individual probabilities. You'll sometimes see this written with, um, uh, in a slightly different way, like this. The probability of A union B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B. So A union B is just the set of all things that are in A or in B. So it really does just mean A or B. Again, um, remember that disjoint events can't both occur. They have no outcomes in common. You'll also sometimes hear the phrase mutually exclusive to describe disjoint events. Let's have an example using this version of the addition rule. A fair die is rolled twice. Let A be the event, the first roll is a six, and let B be the event, the sum of the rolls is a three. These are mutually exclusive events. They're disjoint. They can't both occur. They, um, these two events have no outcomes in common. If the first roll is a six, there's no way the sum can be three. So in order to compute the probability of A or B, that the first roll is a six or the sum of the rolls is a three, we just need the individual probabilities for those two events, and then we need to add them. So in this case, the probability that the first roll is a six is one in six, six possible outcomes there, one of which is um, in our event. The probability that the sum of the rolls is three is two in 36. There's 36 total possible ways of rolling two die, um, two dice, and of those, there are two outcomes that have a sum of three, one and then two, and two and then one. Taking the sum there and then reducing the fraction, we get a total probability of two in nine. Here's another example. This one's taken from Elementary Statistics by Larson and Farber, pretty standard introductory statistics textbook. A survey of homeowners asked 1,001 people how much time passes between house cleanings. The results are summarized in this pie chart. We have less than one week, one week, two, three, and more than four weeks, four weeks or more. What's the probability that a randomly selected homeowner lets more than two weeks pass between house cleanings? So in this case, we're interested in the probability that um, we've selected a random homeowner in the blue or yellow piece of the pie. These are mutually exclusive events. Um, you can't both clean your house um, uh, every three weeks and four weeks or more. So we can add the two probabilities. The probability of cleaning the house every three weeks is 10%. The probability of cleaning it four or more weeks is 22%. Adding those up, we get a total probability of 32%. When um, two events are not disjoint, the addition rule gets slightly more complicated. So here's the addition rule in all its glory. For any two events, A and B, so not necessarily mutually distinct, the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So um, basically we're subtracting off an extra term at the end to account for the fact that A and B may have some overlap. Written in terms of symbols, this is probability of A union B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. So A intersect B just means the outcomes that are in both A and B. The point is that whenever A and B overlap, they include outcomes that are in A intersect B twice, once when they're in A, once when they're in B. So we want to subtract off those outcomes, subtract off that probability. Here's an example using um, that more general version of the addition rule. A survey asked 242 respondents about their smoking habits and their seatbelt use. Here's a table with the results. Um, you can see that we have people that wear their seatbelt, 128 total, and people that don't, 114 total. We also have counts for those that don't smoke at all, that smoke um, 1 to 20 cigarettes, in other words, less than a pack, um, 21 to 40 cigarettes, 2 packs, or more than 40 cigarettes a day, more than 2 packs a day. We'd like to know the probability that a randomly selected respondent doesn't smoke or doesn't wear a seatbelt. There are at least two ways to do this problem. We'll do it both ways and uh, hopefully get the same answer each time. 
Let's let A be the event that the person doesn't smoke and B be the event that the person doesn't wear a seatbelt. So the question we're really trying to answer here is the probability of A or B, the probability of A union B. So let's compute the individual probabilities. The probability of A that they don't smoke is 169 out of 242. 169 being the total number of people in this sample that don't smoke, that smoke zero cigarettes per day, 242 being the total number of people in the sample. The probability that they don't wear a seatbelt is 114 out of 242. We also are going to need the probability of A intersect B, the probability that the randomly selected individual both doesn't smoke and doesn't wear a seatbelt. In this case, just consulting that table, I see there are 81 such individuals, so the probability of A and B is 81 out of 242. Now by the addition rule, the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Doing that arithmetic, we get 202 over 242. Let's compute probability of A or B directly, just by adding the individual probabilities. Here I'm going to be using the addition rule for um, disjoint events. So the event A or B consists of um, at least uh, consists of a total of five different um, cells in this table. We have um, they wear a seatbelt but don't smoke. They don't wear a seatbelt and don't smoke. They don't wear a seatbelt and they smoke one to twenty cigarettes a day. They don't wear a seatbelt and they smoke twenty-one to forty cigarettes a day. They don't wear a seatbelt and they smoke more than 40 cigarettes a day. So I'm taking those individual probabilities, 88 out of 242, 81 out of 242, 9 out of 242, and so on, and I'm just adding them up. Notice that all of these different events now are mutually exclusive from one another. So we really can do the addition rule in its more basic form. Adding all of this up, we get 202 divided by 242, the same probability that we computed before.